So yeah, so Taker comes out. Now, since he don't make it to the Final Four, we'll go ahead and just kind of go through his run. Uh, we talked about this before we went on the air. Yeah. Uh, not really a good Rumble performance by Taker, in no, my opinion. Two in a row now. Uh, well, no, no, no. I think the first Rumble he did pretty good. He went in well, throughout okay. three. You know, he was very dominant yeah, okay. in the brief time, and it took a couple of motherfuckers to get him out. Like it really was like the Road Warriors of the Legion of Doom took him out. Whereas here, after a year plus and a title belt under his waist, title you would think like he would be a lot more dominant, and he wasn't. He threw out Snooka, and that was the only elimination he had the entire Rumble. Uh, he stalked around and choked motherfuckers, and that was pretty much a the lot. extent. And the, the, the choking and like, yeah. where, you know, in a normal match would probably be a pin. Yeah. Here, it's just like, he's just... Uh, not really. I, I, I could be wrong. I don't remember talking about. I don't remember him even going for eliminations with the exception of Snooka. It seemed like I he just constantly had someone in a chokehold, and someone else. Piper comes him. in, helps him, and then Taker comes up, chokes him. Yeah. And then he's like, oh. so he had like this weird triangle choke, yeah. like triple threat choke. It thing. was a weird three way. It really was a th weird three way. I forget who was getting a pipe flare. I'm just going to assume it's Flair because yeah. Flair, which is great too, because I do love that. Roberts and Jake, or sorry, Roberts and Jake. Wait, Roberts wait, and Taker. Oh, on. go ahead. Do you think this is Mean Mark? Oh, no, because Mean Mark had more than just a choke. Oh, I mean, this is... Oh, in his head. This is, you know, he, he's remembering. He's like, I know this guy. Yeah, yeah. This guy was... Not probably not only because, even from Cape Babe, he's been running jobs with him. That's what I'll get to. Was oh, okay. In this Rumble, he's been doing... Um, him and Jake do team up. Like, he doesn't turn on Jake once. He helps him, Jake. Yeah, but him and Flair, who was just, co you know, teaming up, cahooting together in the last two pay-per-views, dude, that shit went out the window quickly. Taker goes right after Flair, almost like, I don't know what the plan, like, you know, kayfabe. What was the plan going to be if they came down to Jake and Taker? I mean, I'm going to assume Taker's going to go on, go after Jake, but it's almost like he's letting it go. Like, he's giving Jake a pass, and he's just showing every motherfucker here, choking, uh, choking him out, and Flair included. There's a great moment, I don't know if you caught it or not, where Flair drops to his knees and just gives Taker the old low blow. I probably and missed that little thing. Heenan goes, did you see that? He tried to lift the other Taker. <laughs> just like, Heenan, you're the fucking man. That's why I love you right there. And he Bonzi's like, no, he did not. He's like, yeah, he tried to pick him up. <laughs> it's just like. By the balls? <laughs> he's just like, not even like, <laughs> it was clearly just that. He's just like, yeah. trying to pick him up. Like, that's just brilliant. I Fucking love Heenan. Um, so, anyways, Taker uh, does some rampaging through here. Um, I mean, really, if you're gonna say like, if, if we can take eliminations out of the equation, mm -hmm. he was yeah. still he was still pretty. I mean, yeah, he's running around choking people, but he, he, but had, he, a presence, he had control but of that ring. Maybe, but even then, all you to say like, he had a presence, but I, I just feel like. It didn't feel like as dominant as there, the, there like, were. There were bigger things ahead of him. Trust yeah, me. Oh yeah, we're yeah. gonna get to that in the no, coming weeks. Oh yeah, I better believe there that. There were bigger plans for us. Um, so, anyways, uh, we'll skip ahead. We'll, when we get to him, we'll you know just kind of gloss over. But when Savage comes in, he goes right after Jake, and of course, like a firecracker, dude, like dominant, like and, ultimate oh, word entrance right there. Yes, and so like literally. Taker's the one that has to kind of calm down Savage. He eventually chokes him down or whatever. But then when Savage kind of gets his second win, he knocks Jake out and eliminates Jake. But Stupid then shit right here. He Stupid runs bullshit. and jumps right over and attacks Roberts, right? Over the top rope. Propels himself over the rope starts beating you up. Now, as a kid... He came off the turnbuckle, didn't yeah, he? I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he prepared. He, 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 it was a yep. self... From all intent purposes... A self elimination. So Taker comes out between it, and he he's the one who ends up kind of breaking up, grabs him by the neck, throws him back in. Sammy still comes back yeah, out, he leaves again, like goes after Jake. And my point is like, you know, even from a strong perspective, that makes sense. Like let him duke it out and finish it up. Yeah. But they don't. And clearly it was a mistake. Like clearly they wanted Savage in there because he would go into the final four. Uh, but it's like they try to play it off like, well, maybe because he didn't throw or he threw himself out, it don't yep. count. When. Four years prior, at there the 89, go. it's Andre the Giant and Jake the Snake again, where Jake the Snake runs out there, Damien, throws Damien in the ring, Andre's like, fuck! And he runs and jumps over the rope, eliminates himself, and it's counted. And they're like, nope, he's out. So it's like, nope, that's, that, that holds no water. Yeah. Um, as a kid, I just bought it, because I'm like, well, you know, rules do change. I really thought you'd be madder than this. You know, I normally do, but... Because I am. 
it didn't happen. Fuck my, that shit. It, it didn't happen because I think it helped. It worked for me because I like Savage. Because I was like, yay, Savage. So when it when it was good, but when someone I liked they get screwed over, I'm like, yeah, but it helped him this time. So I was like, yeah, it's all right. Uh, but no, it really was. It's kind of like a what the fuck WWF or what the fuck Savage. Like you should have been better than this. I can't wait till next Rumble with Savage. It's another stupid yeah, thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get there. Up next at number twenty two. Oh, and I guess you get the uh, Taker, uh, his, his eventual elimination comes at the hands of Hogan. Like, Hogan comes in. I just remember what you were talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, mm. Hogan comes out, rips his shirt, and then he throws out Taker. Unse now, once again, it's another Taker gets clotheslined over and he lands on his feet kind of thing. But it's just like, I mean, I guess in the end it does put a final stake, a final nail in that coffin of the Hogan-Taker uh, rivalry. But it was a very unceremonious little out but go ahead please uh you guys what you want to say I can I can so hogan's a baby face right the baby face the baby face absolutely but it's cool to choke people with your shirt oh yeah he and throw people around oh, with it yeah uh as, as I, was, I literally jumped up from my chair and went what the fuck he's actually been doing that for a long time i know it's messed up Here, here's the thing here's how i justify a there's no rules in a rumble so will that slide but the 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 white meat baby oh, yeah. face Says well, he's, no, there's still rules. He he's pissed. He's like, I want my title back. He got, he got his shit. title ripped away. I okay. And it was when, very when, when you're in, yeah in, in, in storyline. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, 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 it gets sense, a little. But, but um, holy shit, though, I was like, he's just choking. As a kid, he's though, choking that motherfucker. <laughs> as a kid, even I was like, he would like rake the back, rake the eyes. He choked in regular matches, like not even like. Nobody, like he fought Savage and he was like raking his back and choking him out and raking his eyes. Pulls it's hair. like pulls hair. I mean, he, he, yeah. the thing is, uh, Bruce Pritchard and uh, Conrad would always mention this later on that he wrestled as a heel his entire career. Like we don't know it because we're like charity, but he really never did change his fighting style. Uh, as a kid, I would just fight as like, well, he never opened up like that. It was exception to this match, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Normally, he would come out and then it'd be them cheating and then he. Retaliate uh, when he fights King Kong Bundy uh, in the steel cage at WrestleMania 2. Ribs are busted up, and King Kong rips it away and starts choking him with his own tape. And he fights back and chokes him out. And of course, Ventura is just like, "Really, you condone this? He's choking him! Like, you know what, a champion? He's choking him out!" And I'm just like, "Yeah, but he broke his ribs for one, and B, he was choking him just minutes ago." But Ventura is great, so that's okay. Um, so I, I, I always gave Hogan a pass right, in these right. early days. And but here, it, you but know, I couldn't. I, dude, I could not wait. It was for this you, you, were, you were waiting to, yeah. to bust it out. But uh, since this is a show for the Undertaker, even though we're going to leave the Undertaker here, uh, honestly, his performance in this Rumble, and not just compared to last year, but just in general, like the Undertaker, who he is now. Do you think this was a good move? I mean, clearly you're building to something else altogether. Yeah. But at this point, what do you think? Like, do you think this is how you would have played out Takers? Final run, considering how everything's going to shake out, or would you have let it go a little longer? What, what do you think? You think this is okay? I think it's fine. You think it's fine? I think it's fine. You know, he, his debut Rumble. Yeah. Yeah, you got you, you to gotta eliminate people. Yeah. You got to be very strong and dominant. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, and, you know, you get eliminated later, whatever the fuck. You're, you're not winning it, but like, now it's like, like you said, you know, he's, he's had a title reign. We're short, but. Yeah, yeah. You know, a he week, beat, but nonetheless, he beat fucking Hogan. He did beat Hogan, and headline. He's headline match or you know events now yeah, and everything. So I had a little, little help. Well, help, but yeah. He beat Hogan. He beat Hogan. Nobody beat Hogan. No. You know when you're talking about the, geez, you're not choking. I, I, I literally just said this. Yeah. You're not choking people. Yeah. But like I mean, he was still dominating. He was like you know he was just getting everybody. Just yeah. moving everything. You know when he got eliminated, it didn't really affect him any. No, no, it doesn't. And then, you know, and of course he's by, by Savage Hogan. goes after Jake. Yeah, and he's still, you know, he's yeah. trying to help Jake yeah. for whatever it's worth. You know. Yeah, because I mean, they're, this is when they're boys, you know, so it makes sense. I feel like this Rumble was more storyline driven than the last one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, because he was just a couple months in. The I last think Rumble. for me personally. Because, in all honesty, obviously, you got to have Flair do his Iron Man thing. you got to have Flair prove himself and Vince's eyes to this whole thing. Uh, you really do backload the end of this Rumble hardcore, I noticed. Like, literally, it's all, like, heavy hitters toward the end of this thing. So, it's I don't know what theme, you could have done. But, I mean, but in this situation, I don't know what you would have done 
per se with Taker. Because if you would have brought him out early, that would have thrown the whole dynamic with Flair off completely. Yes. Um, so when you bring him in at 20, he can go eliminating a lot of people because, like, you got to have this big finale of all these people. Yeah. So I get it. I just, I don't like it. I don't know. I, like I said, honestly, I don't know why I would have done differently. Bro, uh, how, how, was you, how was you, bro? I mean, maybe I would have had, I mean, still had the Hogan elimination. I mean, maybe more than one fucking elimination. But I mean, still, yeah, I mean, fucking crash. I mean, there were still, still enough people. Duggan, Duggan's still out there. Piper's still out there. I mean, you definitely could have. Wow, Piper's a jobber now. Yeah, I mean, for Taker. Yeah, so, yeah I know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done differently. I'll just say that, and I didn't really care back then. But I guess now we're looking at for Taker's perspective now. It's like, you know, I'm trying to review for him. Yeah. It's just like, now that I'm looking at it for him, I was like, I mean, I guess, it, like you said, it didn't hurt him any, obviously. No. And so, but still, yeah, I, don't know, I guess I'm just, as a fanboy I now. I think this was more storyline driven, though. Yeah. There was more future yeah, plans. Yeah, no, for absolutely, him. yeah. This, last year's Rumble, he had to. He was just establishing himself yeah, at that point. It was his point, first yeah. Rumble, and he'd only been yeah. in the company a little while. With no storylines. I mean, at that yeah. point, it was just like. Throw him out there and have him he be shows people. up and, and yeah. And so I mean, I guess and at least he is in the main. And I said, so when he enters Rumble, then it's like yeah, still start eliminating people. Because I remember in the weeks leading up to this, he was a favorite. It was Hogan, Sid, and Taker. He was a self elimination, wasn't he? No, no, he, Hogan took him out clothesline. Oh, the yeah. last one. No, no, a double clothesline um, from the Legion of. That's right. So, uh, but, he, but he always lands on his feet. So it's never like he's actually ever like dominated out. Yeah, uh, if, he, if he wouldn't land on his feet, he wouldn't be out. That's right. <laughs> Both he's, feet have to hit. The that's foot. true. But if we would have did the foot thing, it would have been all right. I, I believe they've done that before, oh, and it's stupid. It is. Well, they they do it hardcore later on. Uh, I forget which rumble, but fucking law. It don't matter. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll cross paths with them. We'll, but anyways, we're probably going to review a lot of rumbles. We will. Way. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so yeah, I would have changed a whole lot. I, I guess you can't really change anything. Because I mean, no, I don't like it. I don't know what else we've done. Know. So I mean, it is what it is. Um, so yeah. Up next, we got the Berserker. Oh yeah. Husk. Was he, is he in Husk or Huff? What is he saying? It doesn't matter, I guess. But still, Husk. They mention in a throwaway line here, and then I remember vaguely. So they're like, this is his specialty. And I was like, what? But apparently, his whole thing when he was running, when he's fighting jobbers, is he would always win by count out. He would fuck a wrestler up and then throw him over top rope and then take the count out win. Why? No idea. That was his thing. So when he comes Dude, in. Dude, that is my like video game <laughs> strategy sometimes. Well, you get a rush, you just can't take it. You're like, fuck it. Fight him till eight, and then hit him with every hit him weapon. Hit with a finisher, and then run in there. And you you got to knock the ref out. We've all run been out, there. Run out of the ring. Yep. Hit him with a chair bunch. He's knocked out. Run out of the ring. Exactly. The wakes up. Takes. Yeah. I want to see that in a actual wrestling match. I wish they would do more video game type strategy stuff. Like, well, apparently AEW is video game wrestling. What Cornet says. Yeah. So, so. Uh, anyways, uh, so anyways, Berserker comes out, and uh, he uh, he what, wrestles. He he does he, nine, nine he minutes. Wrestles. He, he wrestles. wrestles. Uh, Hogan takes him out. So Hogan takes him it out. It is what it is. Uh, Virgil comes out next. <laughs> I, I crossed my fingers. I was like, dude, please rewrite his Oh, my God. Like, can Virgil do it? Can Virgil pull it up? He, he, again, another guy came out and just... Yeah, a house of fire, yeah. but, uh, you know, it didn't really amount to anything. I, I feel like with him, I would have brought him out so much earlier. And maybe even have him and I know his old hat, but him and DiBiase, because... Really, SummerSlam '91 is the last of his push or any kind of thing, and then he's slowly going down here. Uh, Wrestling so, superstar Virgil. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and he's actually an alternate, unfortunately, oh, no. for um, Mass Skyscraper. Mass Skyscraper. Fuck. <laughs> oh, uh, Brian Knobs. That's why Brian Knobs ate in his event. <coughs> so he was uh, psh, fucking. Oh no, he wasn't. Nikolai Bokov was the substitute. Virgil was in this match. Virgil was in this match. It was Nikolai Bokov that was an alternate for uh, Brian Knobs. So sorry. And we, we covered Nikolai a long time, time ago. I'm, I'm slipping here. Like so, an episode ago. So Virgil comes in in his uh, pink and white stripes, and um, yeah. he gets taken out by Jim Duggan of all people. Like literally, Duggan just throws. And it happens off. Like, something happens. They're doing a close-up of something, and it happens off, and they're like, whoa, someone just owned it. Who was it? Yeah. And it's like, Virgil. Well, they're going on about, like, who, who, who's that? Who's that? Yeah. Virgil's on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so it was just like, oh, fuck, no one cares about that. But, um, yeah, so Virgil's out. Up next, we get uh, Colonel Mustafa, the Iron Sheik. I was the only one I think that was actually kind of, like, 
holds this a little bit more prestigious than they did. Because later on, they'll go on about like all the world champions she, in the she, Rumble. She still looks like she and, Oh, he looks horrible. Uh, they were on about all the world champions that are in the match, you know, or you know, former world champions, you know, you had a Taker and Hogan, fucking uh, Savage, uh, Sergeant Slaughter. And, and then, of course, the us were like, well, Flair also, because, you know, you know, NWA didn't count, whatever. Uh, Sid Justice would be a future champion, so it's like he kind of counts as a you know, contender. But they didn't even talk about Colonel Mustafa. And, of course, this entire run, they neglected to even say Iron Sheik at all. Like, it was like, nope, he's yep. a different guy. And it's like, former world champion! Hogan's first title win was over! Fucking Iron Sheik! Doesn't matter. Nope. Uh, even though, um... He comes out, he literally runs for, uh, oh wait, no, two minutes, 36 seconds. Didn't do Fucking and bullshit. And Savage dumps him out. But like you said, he was looking rough here. Yeah. Then, he, don't get me wrong, he gets way worse as time goes on. Because that gimmick battle royal, fucking forget about it. But uh, I remember... Uh, you should check out some JCW with Iron I have actually, yes. It's, uh, Unfortunately. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's bad. Did they do like a crack pole or a crack, crack pipe, pipe on a pole, pole match? match. Yep. So prestigious. Former world champion, everybody. It was uh, uh, Iron Sheik and Kid Cash. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, cash, cash flow. Because they kept yeah. calling him asshole. Yeah, that's it. It's funny. The commentary. The commentary's great. I'm not going to lie. Does, does JCW. They, they might be the best commentator. Back when it was championship wrestling and not championship. They actually changed the championship wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to make it legitimate, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, anyways. Um, and, you know, we could have saw that. It was just up the road. Oh, yeah, you know, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. I'm sure a DVD will come out at some point, so. Anyways, um, I watched, uh, so he I had still a, smell it. he had a short run, and, uh, talk about Iron Sheik, had a short run in WCW, which was garbage. Uh, was he the Copper Sheik? No, no, he's still Iron Sheik, he owned, like, he owns that, uh, you know, okay. thing. But, uh, he was just out shaped thin. This is like 80s, like 89. Just that huge fucking Pregnant gun. as fuck. And it's like, what? Oh, sorry. Anyway, but no, it was just like, god damn. So when he comes out uh, doing his, I know he's not doing the Bushwhackers, but he's doing the Bushwhacker. I know he's supposed to be doing like a military march thing, but no, he's doing the Bushwhacker oh, yeah, thing. Is, yeah. It's just like, god he's damn. He's the clubs. And once again, as a kid, I was pumped because I was like, Another former world champion, like this is huge. This is you know, and look about him. It's like, wow, no, no, this is not the guy I get pumped for. Uh, anyways, uh, he would be gone until um, he wouldn't make a pay per view return until WrestleMania 13, when he was the manager of the Sultan, yep. which was um, Rikishi. Uh, another Rikishi connection to these old fucks. So, uh, but then he wouldn't actually make his in ring debut or return until the fucking gimmick battle. Well, Jim Cornette was in that. Jim Cornette was in that. Fucking great, and uh, Brother Love. They, they decided to hang out together. They, that's his whole thing. He's like, so I won't get hurt. Let's get together in the corner and we'll just beat each other up. Jim Cornette was in that. Oh, wow. You know, I hate Bruce Prichard, too. I actually went on records that I hate Bruce Prichard. <laughs> but it connects because that's, that's who his opponent was yeah. the whole time. All right, so up next, like you mentioned earlier, Iron Man, former Iron Man, Rick Martel. Doesn't really do shit. Doesn't do anything bad, though. Like he David did. mentioned, like, there's no way he's going to get that record again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he definitely isn't. Uh, he goes for 12 minutes. Uh, you know, isn't there a guy, like, he didn't do shit, and he didn't really add anything to it. Like, he really was just there to kind of fill it up. Yeah, Martel's definitely a guy from my childhood who was just like, eh. Yeah, I he mean, well, well he, he had a great storyline with Jake, and as soon as that was over, it was like, you know you're wrong, he's had storylines since, I know that. Not a Hall of Fame career. nothing... Noteworthy, and going into this rumble, he had Jack going on. In fact, the only thing he has coming out of this was uh, he would feud Tatanka a couple of times over two different things, and that was it. Like he didn't do. Uh, he had a uh, few of Michaels there for a minute when it was uh, remarkably both heels feud with each other oh, over really? who gets to bang Sherry Martel. You don't do that. You, you don't, but they Especially did. Especially for her. They did. Wow, I'm, I'm, oh. I still got a chub for her. I ain't gonna oh, lie. I don't give a shit. Oh, huge titties. I'm sorry, 2019, me too, time's up. Yeah. I won't say titties anymore. But anyways, uh, so Martel, uh, un, un, doesn't do shit. Uh, yeah, yeah this is next. The damn thing. Up next, Hogan, coming out at number 26 Finally. now. Hogan's your fucking again. winner. He, 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 yeah, exactly, he's going to come in and do it. He comes in, and uh, last time he literally did, he was in it for like 20 plus minutes, which I remember really blowing him on that, because he's not that guy. Like in Rumbles, he always goes in for... Five, ten minutes, if that. He goes at the end, and he's in here, he comes in at number, what did I say, 24? No, 26. I mean, he came in toward the end, but he's in there for a good little bit. He's in for oh, like 20 minutes. 
Oh, I had to readjust myself. Oh. I was getting a hard thing about Sharon Martell. Anyways, um, so anyways, Hogan comes in, and I, I gotta admit, he actually has a pretty good uh, run here. I don't know. I don't have to. Oh, four people. Throw out four people. Way better than Taylor. God damn it. this shirt. With this shirt, probably. Uh, but he, I always love Hogan's intro because he'll usually clean house immediately. How about Hogan still, no music, mm -hmm. still coming down the aisle with like the. Oh, yeah. Like in his head, he's like, I know how to do this. Don't he worry about that. Yeah. He hears it. Um, Hogan comes out now. I will say this, I've never seen the original broadcast of this. I was always a costume home video and I'd usually watch it three months later yeah. or whatever. Um, so I've only heard what people are saying is the dubbed crowd noises. Uh -oh. So apparently this was during a time when people were starting to boo him. Especially, we'll get to the end, obviously we'll talk about them, but apparently there was a lot of crowd sweetening on this. I never knew the difference. He gets a pop in my book. Like yeah. I hear him and so to me, nope, no wrong, get a pop. So he comes out there and kicks some ass. Uh, number 27, Skinner. The alligator match. Oh my god. Next. Yeah, he doesn't do much. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter comes out, which, once again, kind of like Colonel Mustafa, it's like world champ, former world champion. Dude, goddamn. But he has the best elimination. Remember his elimination? Sid Justice launches his ass, dude. and dude, he like, he misses like 10 feet of air, just glides across, hits the fucking turbo, and just rockets over. It's like, God damn! It's supposed to happen that way. I don't, you know I, I mean? I, I've yeah. never heard. I don't know. That is insane, though. I, as a kid, it happened so fast. You had to rewind. Like, what the fuck what was that? that? You sit, and you're sitting there, and you go, "What the?" Yeah, no, you jump in. It's like, god damn. It's like, dude. If, if anything else, give him the Hall of Fame for just that bump alone, because it, it, he hits hard. Like he with all his mind. He's so. Like we, you know, we mentioned this before uh, when we were talking about Sergeant Slaughter, uh, which we did the whole Walmart War thing. But whatever. Um, at this point, I didn't realize how crappily out of shape Slaughter was, and how his in ring work was just dog shit. And it's like he was just like, "This is it. This is my last match. I gotta make it count." And he does, and he's just like, "Sid, just throw me. I'll take care of the rest." And yeah. he loves. He's just like Superman's across. Like it's. I'll go over that very bit, but it's like he's Neo and he's just flying across the ring, hits it, and then tumbles over. It is the sickest bump of the Rumble. If anything else, I'll, 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 we'll get flagged. I'm putting it in because that is fucking nuts. Oh my god, so slaughter. Just go ahead and put fuck you, Vince, over the. Yeah, over I will. That. I'll put. I'll, I'll have a space where you can see the impact, but then, yeah, I'll have uh, suck a dick, you cocksucker. Vince. Wow, man. So, you're um, get hard. I'm really hard. getting it. Uh, up next, Sid Justice. Surprisingly, and I'm not sure, I've read this, so I don't know, but I know it's his pay-per-view debut. They're saying it's his in-ring debut? Like, so he's been in the company since, like, August of 91, and just never wrestled? Just showing up, doing promos, he was a special referee at SummerSlam, his match was can or his uh, participation in Survivor Series was canceled, so I knew it's his pay-per-view debut, but it's like, I'm reading it's his in-ring debut, so if anybody knows the truth, put it down, but it's like... Dude, like, how pissed is Vince? Because he's like, he paid money for this dude, who initially was brought in, like, to be the next Hogan. Like, to be his replacement, knowing Hogan's going to be phased out. Changed plans quickly. Shifted to his nemesis. But then, like, he God, only God damn, Vince. How many skyscrapers uh, do you need? Like, literally. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep. That's exactly it. He, he, he's like, I want, I want the whole set. Give me the whole set. I'll take them all. So he I think would, he did get all of them. He did. Well, yeah, because uh, fucking uh, Moyle Mercy. Well, oh, I forgot about Will and Mercy. Yeah, he gets the whole set. Vince is just like, yep. skyscrapers? Goddamn pal, I want them, you know. I'll take them all. Even like, that mask one. <laughs> bring him over. Uh, we'll be attacking, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, so yeah, Sid comes out. Uh, I love Sid. I'm a, I've always been a big Sid love fan. Sid. Uh, dude, his uh, promo pre-match is so fun. Now, it's, it's not awful, but it's awkward. I think it's awesome. It's awkward. I feel like this is probably... Like after a seven or eighth tape though, because we all know Sid's not known for doing his live promos very well. Oh, I found. <laughs> what? Do it again. It's okay. What? 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 Uh, so <laughs> I got thirty-three percent of my mind. I forget what he did. He did like I, if you're if you're half the man I am. I got half the brain of you. Or he did something like that. Oh yeah. Fucking hilarious. But uh, I love it, dude. That oh, whole like you know it's gonna hit you like a bullet in the brain or a shot to the brain. Dude, I love that. Like it's, I will say, I don't like. I don't think he does the quiet psycho promo nearly as good as the terrifying Jake Roberts. I'll agree, but I think he does it really awesome. Like I, I love this promo. But after this, it's always just yelling, and I, I like. I, this I, I think he's, he, he's better as a yeller. All right, fair enough. 
Uh, old Yeller. Old Yeller. <laughs> so, uh, but no, he comes out and uh, Big Pop. Now, I remember as a kid, I was a big fan. Uh, not as big as Hogan, obviously, but uh, I wonder if that'll stick around after this match. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but he comes out pretty good. He does a, a few eliminations. I won't, I uh, guess I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Uh, <laughs> six. He throws out six motherfuckers wow. here. So, you know, not, not too goddamn bad at all. Uh, anyways, uh, he does a good double elimination on Piper and Martell. Dumps them out. The awesome aforementioned slaughter toss out. Dude just dominates. It's fucking awesome. Uh, and then the last one, number 30. We've mentioned this before. The Warlord. It was he who he was referring to. It was. It was. I mean, I don't see it. I, I think he, he looked like he slowed down quite a bit. <laughs> Really? Oh God! A jacked up Stone Cold. Oh my Austin. God! This dude's fucking huge. Like he's getting bigger, and yet his push keeps getting smaller. Like it's the weirdest fucking. Loved thing. the Warlord. Yeah, huge fan. I mean, not not I mean, had, like the mask. Yeah, the fan the, the opera, w, the metal uh, fan the opera, the, the W staff. Staff, yes. That run is perfect. And unfortunately, in his later run, he would he would keep the attitude of that, but he got rid of the whole get up, and I hated that. He still had like the lightning bolts and shit on his pants, but it wasn't as cool. But when he came out with that shit. Awesome. Jacked up Steve Austin. He's a... Uh, Looks just like him. Comes in the ring with Harvey Whippleman, which I, I was just never a fan of Harvey Whippleman. From Louisville. Is he really? I mean, not that that's close to us, but you know. No, yeah. Just Don't saying. try to follow us geography boys. Yeah. We're near K-Fabe Land, so I don't need to worry about. K-Fabe Land. Between parts K-Fabe unknown. Land and Parts Unknown. Boom. Right, yeah, we're so, there. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, he comes out and he only goes for a minute 43, which is... Decent for the Warlord, because my God, he, the guy never can crack like two minutes, it seems like. Nah, he's and, probably already gassed. Yeah, him. and again, for the third time, he is eliminated by Hogan. Now, his four runs, he's eliminated once by, like, Andre Giant, but then the other three is Hogan, and they're just quick eliminations. Hogan is not like With Warlord. Once, when Warlord comes in, it's just a quick dump out, so he's in for four seconds. Last year, he comes in, he's in for, like, maybe two minutes, Kind of reunites his uh, British Bulldog feud, and then he's just clotheslined by Hogan out, and in here he comes in for less than two minutes. He's number fucking thirty, which is a prime spot. You should be happy with. We're going to win, right? And yep. literally him and Sid. Now, granted, that's a good way. To get, I will say, every time he's eliminated, it's by a legitimate like threat. I mean, it's like yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like you know fucking Berserker or fucking Jesse fucking eliminated. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> So it's, I mean, from Jesse and Festus. Yeah, so, uh, you know, once again, it's a, it is a good, you know, thing. But still, it's like, God damn. Like, I still believe that. And you know what? That makes more sense. Maybe it was Hogan. Like, Vince just, like, pushes this guy to the moon, and Hogan's like, ah, you're a good big muscle guy up here. Because eh, it makes no sense why Vince wouldn't push him. I could get, dude, Great Khali was like former world champion, couldn't wrestle for shit. Like, Warlord could wrestle very Great Khali, not yeah. by much, but he could. Yeah, I don't get it. But, anyways, we're not here for the Warlord. That's going to be our next. Fuck, fuck Prisoner and Nell, really Warlord, and the injustice that is his career. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so the series is canceled. It's canceled. So, anyways, uh, War gets taken out. So, is, uh, is Warlord still with us? Yeah, still on the indie scene and still huge as shit. Still, like, Barbarian has slimmed down quite a bit because there's still uh, Powers of Pain on the uh, indie circuit. Because they're only doing, like, what, $50 a night, so Vince oh, doesn't care about that. 66 years yeah. old, though? And, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, they had a match recently against God Demolition. Damn it. The original Demolition 2. Axe and Ripple Smash. Man. Where's, uh, where's Crash at? Anyways, uh, so anyway, they're like, oh, come on. So, uh, and it was it was one of the worst matches. Like, I actually watched the whole match. Full get up, though? Full, kind of. They do the makeup. And then, like, Axe is wearing, like, the t-shirt for whatever promotion he's wrestling for. So it says, like, you know, JC Boston, w. whatever. Yeah, like, the Boston Wrestling League or whatever. Uh, now, I like Warlord the, and Barbarian. I like the BWL. Yeah, I'd be down for it. Uh, Warlord and Barbarian, however. Full, I mean, they didn't have a get but they had the tights. Still working tights, and it's just like, boom. Uh, but it looks, it looks really bad. Like, literally, though, I will say, and I don't think it's crowd sweetening, the crowd's on fire for the entire, like, 10 minute tag match with these guys? Can you sweeten a crowd in the indie circuit? That's what I'm saying. I, it, maybe. Can you make 300 sound like 30,000? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Dunn could. Kevin Dunn could. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Warlord doesn't, uh, yeah, he, he uh, gets taken out. So. Do seriously, in all, in all, all seriousness, Warlord, fuck yeah. I'm a, yeah, jokes aside, like, Mass Skyscraper, we pump up to a ridiculous mythology yeah. status. Fuck my Mass Skyscraper, unless you want to do the show. I just sent so, out a uh, thing for him. I was going to say, Warlord, please come but on the Warlord, show. But Warlord, I legitimately, I had a toy of you when I was a kid. You, Your arms went like this, 
and then they were spring loaded so you can throw fuckers and his fingers all broke off so he had nubs but I still wrestled with him I didn't give a fuck because guess yeah. what he's a warlord uh, even warlord in, don't need fingers yeah like the, it, one of the last toys I had as a kid like whenever like you know, that age comes and you're like get those toys away he which, just needs a thumb just need a thumb that's it uh, I ended up throwing away the, uh, the are you doing a reference yeah, well, I guess you need fingers to. Yeah, I fucked up. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, Warlord, I, I am legitimately a fan. I've been singing your praises for years. You should see. And he Austin. really should be getting a push. He rips you off, bald headed, black ah, trunks. Sue Go Vince. Team. Vince is the one that held you down. Steve Austin was Warlord. Go beat Steve Austin's ass. Now, I don't know. For he real. lives at three sixteen Gimmick Street. At his address. <laughs> Does, uh, was Warlord involved in that huge like lawsuit that like all these like old probably. Ones? So that's probably, probably. why. I mean, that's probably what led to him being shit. I have, I have no idea. I'm just saying probably. probably. Well, I feel like anybody I who was a nobody is involved in that lawsuit. Yeah, and it, this is it because don't they're not in the Hall of Fame. Fucking everybody else. When in the it Hall comes of Fame. down to it, let's say yeah. let's say they win, they get like a check for sixty three dollars each. <laughs> principle of it though, fuck it. Yeah. I would. Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, so now the, the, the Rumble's thinning out, and we get down to the final four, which ends up being uh, Hogan, Flair, Justice, and Savage. Yeah, now, I called that from like... Oh yeah, the kid, I mean, literally, you were just like, yeah. I mean, once Taker's taken out, and Flair is somehow in there, you're like, fuck! And it's just like, you know, everybody else, you're like, no, he has, like, Flair, he's not going to get taken out before Martell at this point. So, as a kid, it was very believable, these were before. I will say, though, Savage is another one of these guys who always has a re weird rumble. I don't know, like, he don't he don't get his shit together in a rumble. He's a house of fire for, like, a minute, and then he just gets beat up the entire fucking time. And so, he spends a lot of this rumble just, like, slumped in a corner or in the Savage ground. Savage wants that one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Yeah, but then beyond that, it's just like... Yeah, and even that one-on-one -on -one didn't always turn out good for him. Well, Catch us next month. Uh, anyways, um, so here, Sid has Savage up, and Flair just runs and throws that knee into his back. Now, and of course, Savage drops just like a sack of shit into the ground. Um, as a kid, I was kind of mad at Sid for even going after Savage. I'm thinking, like, dude, after Flair. And then as an adult... Yeah, even Flair's, the, Flair's dead right yeah. now. Yeah, you know? and so and from Kayfabe, though, I'm thinking like even like Sid. Now I didn't do this as a kid, but as an adult, it's like you do have that Horseman um, history with Flair, and now you guys are on opposite ends. Like, why would you not just want power on this motherfucker out of the ring? So from a Kayfabe perspective, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. Uh, like I mean, in this world, but see, as a kid though, I would combine all the kayfabes together. Well, Vince, Vince, Vince didn't want did, you as yeah. a fan. He didn't. He, did, he clearly didn't. He didn't want that thinking. He doesn't want us now as fans. He, I said yeah. I, I, I guarantee you. He said, "Well, nobody knows who Ric Flair is." Yeah, no, I'm. I'm at, you're absolutely right about that. So, <laughs> as you know, as the career has we're done to final three, and at this point, Flair has now got some energy. Like, now he is taking it to Hogan, and Hogan's taking it back to him, and they're just beating the shit out of each other. And Sid's just watching them in the corner. Like, as he the, should. What, what's like? And so as they're fighting, Flair is kind of, he's kind of in the ropes, and Hogan's right there, and Sid's like, fuck, it goes over, and he dumps Hogan out. Now, it should be noted that, I guess, in the original release, in the live crowd, bullshit number two. Yeah, like, literally, they oh, yeah. dump him out, and the crowd goes wild. They're going nuts for it. And Monsoon even says to the effect, and I don't know because I never heard it, uh, to the effect of, uh, well, it's every man for himself, and that's the Royal Rumble. Now, in subsequent releasings and the network and the Coliseum Home video and the version I had, it is met with thunderous boos, and Monsoon says, wow, what a Pearl Harbor job, or something like that. And it's just like, what? It's the Rumble! Like, and Hogan is the... And Hogan is the... Himself. He did a tugboat last year! <laughs> so it's just like... So anyways, now as a kid, I was so drinking that Kool-Aid that I was pissed. And I was like, why? You guys should have threw Flair out and went one-on-one -on -one like real men, even though, you know, I was upset and really pissed. So when that happens, and of course, Flair looks scared. And he's backing up now in the middle of the ring. He's like, I gotta fight Sid now. But as Sid's ja or uh, jaw jacking with him, Hogan grabs his hand, starts kind of pulling him, and then Flair is like, yep, and he goes behind him and launches him out. Rick Flair! How's Hogan not a heel? <laughs> there is so many, and we'll get to that here in a minute, this I guess. This is bullshit. At an hour and two seconds, 
Ric Flair sets the Iron Man record from and from starting at number three, the earliest anybody's ever done, breaking all kinds of record, and he wins the world title. When's that gonna be broken? Just one year later. We'll get to that next year. Oh, we're about that. Next month's going to be a fun oh, we, get to, we get to watch another Rumble. We get to watch another Rumble. And I, we're, I'm having fun interviewing this one. I'm going to have more fun just tearing that one up. But we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry about that. So, I'm anyways. Sure why we didn't tear this one up. I love this one, though. This is honestly. Uh, oh, man. So, Hogan gets, you know, thrown out. Said, you know, and now. I don't we, think I should have took 92 off. <laughs> this is fuck. So, at this point, though. Clearly, Flair and Hogan is no longer going to be a thing, and now we're focusing and setting the seeds for Hogan's injustice, or Sid, whatever we're going to play. And so it's just like, huh. Now, as a kid, it was logical. Because, I mean, once again, as a kid, they're not even building the Hogan Flair. I'm just watching it as it comes out every week. So it's just like, I'm watching this thing happen. Yeah. And to me, it's like, he, and, and I thought, honestly, as a kid, he would destroy Sid at Mania, and then he'll probably catch up the. Flair at SummerSlam or something like that, you know, he'll, oh, of course. He'll, yeah, yeah. Flair will get his, you know. Flair's going to stick around. Yeah, so, and, and so is Hogan, you know, they're both going to be here, yeah. perfect, you know. So, in my mind, it was never like, uh, but, not, but you know, with retrospect on our side and that 2020 booking, yeah. or, or 2020 hindsight booking, it's just yeah, like, yeah. <sighs> really? Like, this is where we're going? And don't get me wrong, I don't know, I don't know. Because like I said, we talked about last week that, you know, I actually did, and I put a clip on uh, last week's episode of, um, Hogan and Flair at Madison Square Garden in 91, November. The crowd's going nuts. Now, that's sweet and maybe, but it's like the crowd looks animated. Like, they look like they're into yeah. it. So it's like money. Fucking money. But go ahead. No, you got something. Go for it. I mean, oh, I don't really have anything. Oh, okay. But I mean, is that Vince's bubble again? Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Vince is just like, nah, I want a small fight savvy. He's just a small in guy. The pro wrestling world. Yeah. Not WWF. Yeah, 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 you're right. Just, not NWA. Just overall. Flair Hogan. Yeah. The two biggest stars in pro wrestling. Yeah. I mean, you know, there may be, depending on who, what side you're on. Yeah. There's, you know, who's bigger. But Yeah, no, you're right. Be, either way. Make it happen in the biggest company in all of pro wrestling. On the biggest stage of them all. And we'll join you next, or you'll join us next week. Well, not yet. I got a little. I got, we got, no, no, I'm oh, not. Oh, yeah. Okay, you did. Yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Got like, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, join us next week. Be, yeah. Join us next week, and we'll, we'll tell you how that went. Yeah. Um, or he's going to spoil it anyway. But so, oh no, no, no. Well, we'll, well, we'll actually, we will actually go. Yeah. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. Um, so I don't know. As a kid, though, this did leave me as a. Um, like a sour taste in my mouth because I was like a huge Hogan fan. And then the fact that it's really messed up, but they do redeem it. So Did with, you know who Ric Flair was? You know, I did only because toys and my uncle, but I never watched a single Ric Flair. But match. not not to that level, no. I mean yeah. I, if you would have been like You he, knew he existed on yeah. this planet. Yeah. And was a wrestler. But. And honestly, from what I saw, he was just he's always cheating. I mean he always did anyway, but I mean like at least in those other venues he displayed that he was actually a great wrestler on top of the cheating. Whereas in WWF, he was never getting that choice. It was always just quick matches that he would cheat and get around. So he never was displayed as a technical okay. wrestler. Yeah. As opposed to, I mean, he was just like, you know, chicken shit hill. That's it. Hogan was definitely displayed as a technical exactly. wrestler. Exactly. Well, you, but you know what I mean, though. Like, at least he was given a good light to oh, shine. Yeah. You know? They never gave Flair that good light until now. And this is the only time where, even as a kid, I'm like, he passed that test. Like, now... I can take Flair seriously, oh, even though yeah, he would never. Who he is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Vince, for showing us. You know. Yeah. Um, he knew what he was doing. Like I said, the doll. Uh, I hated it, and uh, it's funny though. Like you know, they don't even give Flair proper in-ring celebration. Like it's quickly just Hogan Savage, or sorry, Hogan uh, Sid. I think Savage probably still laying on the floor. He just he took yeah. a he took a bump. He's like, I'm done for the night. But uh, anyway, they're they're, they're you have to be pulled apart, and this will set it up. But they give Flair, and in my opinion, the greatest. And I've watched. Fuck everybody out there who's like, you should watch his old Jim Crockett shit. No, fuck you, because I have been watching that shit. This is the best Ric Flair, Ric Flair promo ever is his post Royal Rumble. Oh, my God. He even has tears in his eyes. Yes. He's so happy. You know, perfect. He was always a condescending prick, and he's happy. You know, he but he's so smug. But the fact that he's so happy, too. It's like, it's legitimately, everybody is happy across the board. It's just, I don't know, dude. Dude, Flair gives the greatest 
uh, fucking promo uh, ever. Now, here's the weird thing. Now, I had the Coliseum Home Video release. I really? uh, taped it off. We were rebels back then. Um, you owned that? Owned it. Well, I, I taped it. We had, we, dude, I'd have like tapes, like two or three pay per views on one tape. You can stretch that shit out for eight hours. This okay. was before WWF was doing like 10 hour pay per views. So, anyways. That's um, what we all did. I, just thought, I thought this guy was Mr. Moneybags here. Oh, no, no, no. no. In fact, the only ones I actually had like legit cases to was anything I picked up in a pawn shop. And that was actually later past. Yeah, like later. when I wasn't even like. Yeah. Watching, like, you know, at this time I used to watch it religiously. And then when I'm in high school, I'm kind of like, well, I'm watching the current stuff. I'm not revisiting the shit. But I'd pick up, you know, tapes and pawn shops. Uh, on the network, it has this interview with Flair before the Rumble where he even says, like, I drew number three. And I was like, that wasn't on the thing. But they're like, this is a Coliseum home exclusive, but it wasn't on the tape. So I don't know what that's like. I mean, I was legitimately shocked first time I saw it that he came out at number three. And there was never an interview that says, well, I'm at number three, I'm going to prove to the world. Th yeah. That was not there, but it's on the network version for some reason, which I think just takes the piss out of the whole thing. Even though we know now, but still, it's just like, I don't know. Um, so let's talk about a little bit of the aftermath here that would fall out from the Royal Rumble. Um, uh, is no one going to mention the fact that Ric Flair was not bleeding at all? Kind of a shock, isn't it? Well, there was a strict no blading policy, which he would... Uh, Fucking bullshit! Well, he, and again, to quote the Iron Sheik, well... Look, no, dude, look at his chest, though. No, okay. Oh he's my beat God! Man. They they went over that. Oh, over but that. dude, but look at it. Like I'm watching, going, oh fuck. That's those. That's those. All those NWA guys that, that came in and got their chest. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I guarantee it. Did. Um, fuck my you. God, dude. Fuck you. Fucking like uh, Valentine, who is like the guy that he's only up like well, four yeah. minutes, but he's just like getting this thing lined up for you, chop. Chop! It's like, oh fuck! I get someone who knows how to chop. God damn, fuck! This is one of the cleanest at this time, like yeah. cleanest you've seen Ric Flair. But I think over honestly, an hour. I'll say I'll agree with you there, but man, the story's on his face, oh, no, and no, his yeah. body, and you, know, you don't like, think about yeah. that. At the time. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit of thing. So we get uh, the WrestleMania eight. I don't know if you remember this or not, but they had a WrestleMania eight press conference where they was going to announce who's going to fight. Flair for a title, and you actually had several people. Yeah, some Hogan's like, and so literally, well, no, that's, so what happened is Sid is like, well, I was the last one eliminated from the Rumble, okay, yeah. so Sid's getting ready to stand up, and Jack Taylor's like, Hawk, Hogan, he's like, what? And he's pissed. So initially, it was set Hogan versus Flair by eight. But then Sid gets pissed. So what we end up having is a tag match. What? I want to know what the fuck happened. Well, Saturday Night Main Event rolls around, and we have. Taker and Flair going up against Sid and Hogan, and as Hogan's getting his ass beat because he couldn't hulk up for some reason, he's crawling over like, Sid, give me a tag, and Sid just like, nope, and he hops off the ring apron, and he walks away, and Hogan's like, you know what, fuck that title and fuck the most prestigious thing in pro wrestling, revenge, and that's what set up this match, so the fact that Sid turned his back on him, instead of waiting to get the title first, and then I'll come and get you after that, fucker, he literally just says, Jack, you know that contract we signed? Rip it up. I'm going to fight him now. And we get Sid versus Hogan at WrestleMania, which, since we're not actually covering that match, uh, we'll just go ahead and say it. Hogan wins. Uh, even though he's on his way out of the company, he he, he, he wins. Uh, funny enough, Sid was also on his way out of the company. Not by choice, uh, but he asked for his release. Well, he had a softball tournament. He has, he has, some, he has some games going. Uh, so anyways, uh, but his run was just kind of, uh, like, if you really got Sid Justice run, even though he's a part of the best match ever, uh, his run was just kind of like, really? Like, you paid money for this guy. Yeah. He didn't do shit. Uh, so anyway, but they do have a decent-ish match. I mean, it's not a classic, but it's, it's not bad. But it does have one of the wackiest fucking finishes because uh, Papa Shango misses his cue. Which, once again, why is Papa Shango interfering in a hogan Sid match? Like, he wouldn't even manage by Harvey Whipple, to my knowledge. So it's like... He was just like, I'm making a name for myself tonight. So anyway, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, Sid kicks out of the leg drop, which never happens. Never. And then Hogan, actually, you can see on his face, he's pissed legitimately because he's like, that shouldn't even happen. But now, fuck, you've kicked out my leg drop. So he goes over, and of course, at this point, Harvey Whipple was like, well, I guess I'll get involved. Just got to save this thing. Then he cue it. Then Papa Shango runs out, tag team, and then we get a returning warrior. Returning Warrior, which, you know, uh, lasts for a good pay-per-view, and that's it. But uh, anyways, Warrior comes out, and then it is a kind of cool moment as a kid. But then, even as a kid, when I go back and rewatch this, after a few months, it's like, wow, like, none of these guys are here. 
Like everyone, at that point, Papa Shango was uh, shortly released, but he'd come back for uh, the next Rumble. We'll talk about him next month. Uh, or ne yeah, yeah, next month. Uh, and then uh, Hogan's gone, Sid's gone, and Warrior's gone. So it's just like, wow, there you go. Uh, speaking of Flair and, uh, and his title, you know, he's won his world title. And so he starts talking about how he has been banging Elizabeth. Which at this point, even though in real life they've been married for years, uh, kayfabe wise, they just got married back in 91. Him, yeah, him yeah, yeah, Savage. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and he's just like, yep, I got photos. And of course, when you see the photos, they're, I mean, this is 92, like, Photoshop 92. So it's clear, like, it's not Flair at all, but it's all these pictures of Savage and uh, Liz together, but with Flair to superimposed on it. They're ridiculous. But then he kept claiming that he has other photos behind closed doors type photos, you know what I mean? And he was, uh, of course it never does pay off, but he's just like, I will put them in the Hoosier Dome. Yeah. Or was it Mark Square? No, it's Hoosier Dome. Hoosier uh, Dome. At WrestleMania 8. Are we, and, are, we, are we close to it? I don't know, geography-wise. I know parts unknown is kind of close to that, so maybe. Anyways, okay. um, he was like, I'm going to put these in plaster all over WrestleMania 8, and Savage is like, bullshit, and so Savage got a title match. Just because! Like, he didn't earn it, didn't win any matches to get a shot, but because Flair was claiming banged his wife. Did you know there was still some small club in, 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 in that city? Uh, yes. That wants, that wants to use that name? Uh, to, our and, boy. Our boy uh, plays and, up there. And uh, to just be like, hey, I played the Hoosier Dome, and then people were like, wow, and then they're like, oh... Yeah, yeah mine, it's the, well, I will, I will admit, uh, our uh, friend Josh Chaney, uh, who was uh, Donald Willis in Unspeakable Acts, he played, he has a band, uh, The Lines, that played up there. Thanks, man. Uh, hey, I just busted his balls, uh, and, and I was trying that's to... That's all right. Well, I will say, but he, he's actually very... So whenever he first told me, he goes, hey, I'm playing at the Hoosier Dome this weekend. I was like, dude, fucking... God damn! Good, good job! And he goes, oh, no, no it's nice. It's not that one. And oh. I'm like, oh! Because I mean, yeah, even then, I was just like... Well, how do you want him to show up for uh, you know, these small bands? But uh, he's like, oh no, it's, it's a nightclub up there. Like, oh, all right, well, still good, you know. It's, it's, but it's not the uh, it's not the Hoosier Dome that I thought he was going to play for. But he he now he plays it off pretty. I'm sure there are probably people that's like when they go out state and shit. They're like, well, I'll play the Hoosier Dome. They're like, really? The, the Hoosier Dome? He's like, yeah, you know, WrestleMania A, WrestleMania, yeah, the home of WrestleMania A. So. Yeah. So anyway, Savage would go up against uh, Flair. Flair would blade and get in a lot of trouble and find. Even though Piper did it, or not Piper, uh, Hart did it, but they were able to play it off on an accident that night. Yeah. Whereas Flair is shown on camera doing this. Oh. Oh. And they're just like, yeah, you're you're fine. You, you did it, you know. Uh, so anyways, uh, but then Savage would win the this title. This ain't the NWO, man. <laughs> exactly. NWA. NWA. Or the NWA. Any other one. Any other one. Um, Freudian slip. There it is. Flair... Uh, with the exception of this match and this match alone, he had one of the worst runs ever. And I didn't realize that as a kid. I always thought it was like, it's a solid run, one world title, twice. Now, if you go back and actually look at all of it, it's just like, dude, it's, it's, he's wasted. And we've already covered this last week or last month, so I won't go all in on it. But it is just kind of like, god damn. Like, they, they literally did one of the greatest WrestleMania performances of all time, or Royal Rumble performances of all time. And then they just fucking came all over. Like, they didn't shit on it yet. Just came on it first just to be like, you're a fucking whore. And then before he leaves, they shit on him. And it's just like, why? But That's what I told him yeah. as, he, as he walked through the front door this this morning. Yeah. We we, we get we get to talk about Ric Flair's entire cup of coffee. With yeah, the that's it. Um, so then that's, that's that. Uh, we also got our boy, but we'll talk more about that next week. So this match right here. Star rating. And give us your analysis. This is your overall... Yeah, three. Give three? I don't really have a, a huge... I mean, Royal Rumbles are Royal Rumbles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, yeah. some are better than others, but to me, they're just average. Okay. They're very, very entertaining, but... So you give it a three. It's you equally... Know, it's the higher end of what you normally give them, like, so... whatever, you know. Okay. Fair enough. Well, you don't like... You don't like point five. I don't. I don't. So, so you're right. So not four star match. It would, so gonna... it would technically be a two point five, but I'll give it a three. I always round be, up. Being generous, I like this guy. I round up. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because uh, it wasn't horrible. It's just a rumble. So any highlights down for you? Things you like? Things you didn't like? What's uh? Bossman's roundhouse. <laughs> awesome. You know, Flair. Flair. I mean. Yeah. He was a chicken shit heel the entire time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like he just laid around and like got no. ignored. 
No. Dude, he was getting his ass kicked Actively the Actively working the match for an hour plus, I you mean. Know, I mean, he had his rest spots and stuff, sure, but, but like. Few and far between, yeah. in all honesty, I mean, it was like, yeah, no, dude puts on a, a clip you know, there. Taker's role, since that's who we're talking about, eh. Yeah. I, I liked it. I think it was fine for him and for the character, and it worked for, for the him. overall storyline. But overall, like on the Royal Rumble yeah. match, like he came and went. Fair enough. He was, you know, whatever. Okay. Well, that's you, bud. I mean, you're, you're a Rumble. Four-star fucking you know. match. Love it. Favorite, um, favorite one, isn't it? It's my favorite one ever. Uh, now, as wow. we get closer, and I start reviewing more of these and watching more, that could change. But as of right now, you're asking me today, honestly, this has always been my favorite. Uh, I love the cast that's in this thing. Like, I know seriously, he, I know he was for it, it literally is like a who's who. And even though like we got a lot of like gimmicky jobbers, berserkers, yeah. repo man, skinners, I don't give a fuck. I love it. Like I, well, to you me, gotta, it's you gotta so, have that. You do, and it's just and then we we look at it from a legit standpoint. In Virgil, we have Virgil on this one. Uh, from a legit standpoint, it's like you literally have a great. Like assortment of legends, and even if you don't want to, you know, give certain people their due, it's like you still have Iron Sheik and Slaughter and Sid Just as a former world champion, uh, or sorry, a future world champion, and all these other world champions. It's, it's just like a perfect mix. But even for the time, forget legends. Yeah. Even for the time, like your whole card was represented there. Yes. I mean, not everybody. everybody no, not you're right. Roster, but, but I mean, like. But, your low a good card, chunk. your mid card, yep. and your high card were all... At a time where maybe, I mean, I'm sure the Smarky fans, even of 92, were like, well, we know he's going to win, it's got to be Flair or Hogan. As a kid, though, I truly did think that maybe the British ball could pull us off, you know, maybe Virgil, oh, yeah. in some weird way, could be like, fuck it, and get in the last second, oh, I won! It could have been anybody, you know, it, it, Haku, Haku, who was an alternate, literally won the lottery here, because guess what? A few weeks ago, he was not even on the card, and then uh, Janetti went through a window, and he gets called up. Legitimate badass. For a world title. Exactly. It's like anybody could have won this thing. Um, great spots throughout. Great. It wasn't just like I said, like, the last Rumble, unfortunately, and much as I do I love the last Rumble too, this uh, last Rumble really only had one story going into it. Hogan having to defend America, and that was it. Here, however, you had multiple storylines. You just had Michaels coming off his uh, hill turn and trying to prove himself as a singles competitor. You had uh, Taker and Hogan in battle in this battle for their title. But you had Flair, on the other hand, who's going through a rumble from the number three spot all the way through it, who's trying to prove that he's the real world champion. I mean, he's already kidding. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in, but he's you know, legitimately... Yeah. He is his chance to shine. You got Savage and uh, Roberts having their you know feud. You got Piper who literally just won his first title in the company mere minutes ago. Like yeah. literally like, 45 minutes ago, he just we became the IC champion, and he's going in for the world title. You got Iron Men such as DiBiase, Valentine, and Martell who in the end don't do shit. But going into it. You're like, holy shit, these guys were guys who were yeah. making it, and now they're going to go in again, and the title's on. There's just so much going on. And for and really, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, it is Flair's show. Like, if it, I mean, you take Flair out of the equation, it probably would just be like, well, it's a busy rumble, but, yeah, no, it's Flair. And, and you got Flair. Yeah. Mr. NWA. Yeah. Coming into their territory. Admitting. Yeah. This is the title. Yeah. Yeah, no other titles uh, matter. I've won other titles. But, but this, this is the only one. Yep. That Which matters. is probably why it's the best. And I mean, all time. Vince went, oh, yep. yeah. Fucking, he's just spraying that shit. He's like, oh, God. He just, he just and then, pants, and then before he even got a stunt done coming, he was like, well, where'd he go? Yeah. And, and, and I think Jesse's just like, oh, give me a towel. Okay, now we're getting Hogan sitting in the main event, right? That's what we're really worried about. Okay. Big sweaty guys. Hey, Warlord. Um, so, anyways. Uh, <laughs> But that, that, but that was the thing, like, when you were talking about the post-promo thing, yeah. I was letting you do your thing, but, like, that's the one thing I was like, wow, he, he really said that. Yeah, he, he really did. went on and said that this... And you know what? A part of me is like, he meant it. I mean, I know he's an NWA guy and was happy to get back, but then there's a part of me just like, no, like, I mean, if he didn't, it's in his mind. I mean, he, he come across like, no, that was legit. And, and, you know, to me, I know everybody's going to be like, well, the NWA and, you know, just we're wrestling have its roots and everything, WCW. But to me, it's just like, we're WWF guys through and through, and to us, this is our world title. Oh, I agree. And so it's just like when you hear Mr. NWA saying that, it but just kind of like gives you a little more validation. The stories from from Flair's generation talk yeah. about WWF. 
Clown show. Fuck those guys. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of fucking they're doing gimmicky yeah, stuff. Gimmicky and, bullshit. Like, like circus up there. Yeah. I ain't worried about it. This is where the real wrestling is. And for him to come in, put on a like hell of a performance. They're a very top guy that, he, that represents them. Yeah. To say, no, this is, this is it. This is it. Even right they come in with their belt and say, this is the real title. I'm the real yeah. champion. And do that whole thing. And, and then turn around and then be like, oh no, this is the title I really wanted the yeah. whole time. It's just... Yeah. I, mean, I, I I think that there was some Vince like saying, "Dude, you gotta say this." Yeah, but I think it's also because you got, your, you've got to shit yeah all over that. That, but I also think too, because hey, he had no problem shitting on because once again, I, Jim Herb was in you know charge and he hated him. But I think it's also just one of those things where like whenever any wrestler goes to any company, you're always going to be like, "Well, this is where I belong. We're the real, real." You, you can literally just be going to AWA in their dying days, and you'll still just be like, "Now this." Fuck those two big promotions. This is where wrestling's at today. It's like find me a WCW 2000-2001 promo that says something similar to that, because that that would be funny. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, uh, whenever uh, oh, you know, jump to uh, WWE or from WWF to WCW, they would, and they'd always refer to like, well, we only wrestled there for the money. Like we 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 went north, made our money, but we came down here to prove where you know it really mattered. And they, they did that quite a bit. Uh, so no, I think she did happen quite a bit. So. You get, it's, it's what you gotta do. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you paid me a bunch of money and I went to WWF and they're, and they're like, hey, I mean, as a manager, obviously, as a manager, but I'd be like, you know, I'm here representing the greatest wrestlers in the world. And then I got a contract to AEW. I'm like, you know, seriously, you know, I made a ton of money over there, but this is where the real wrestlers are. And then I get a contract to NWA, you know, doing their studio shows. I'm like, you know, seriously, those other two places I went to, they couldn't cut it. So this Flair, is Flair in 91, 92. Oh, uh, Absolutely, I think. But once again, you think, that's you think, his job. You think he's he a journeyman. He's a wrestler. Equal or more money in that small window in the WWF than he did in. Yeah, I don't know though for a fact. Twenty years in the NWA. Yeah, yeah I don't know because I would say when the NWA was hot in the late '80s, like the Jim Crockett, when Dusty yeah. hit the book, I'm sure he was fucking killing it money wise. But. You always hear like Arn Anderson say like you know when he had his stint with you know the Rainbusters there him totally he was like man we were making huge paychecks so I don't know I I really wish Joey was here God damn it. like this is what we need Joey for if anybody else knows was Flair more financially set up during his WWF run in ninety one ninety two or was he making more money in the eighties so let us know if you have any idea even if you don't know or, just your speculation was, was he duped. Was he sold a bill See, of goods that he you, didn't? You hear that too, where people were like, we were promised this much. Because that's what Arn Anderson was pissed about. He goes, we made great money. Because Flair went, then, I mean, immediately went back. Yeah. Like, there was no, like, yeah. you know, he didn't He, didn't he actually got out of his contract. He actually yeah. requested to go back, and they let him out. So, and, I mean, then, and then had another good run. Yeah. Uh, went back to the world title picture. Like, went yeah. back to win the, you know, so. That's the thing about Flair. Even, no matter where he ends up, he's going to win the title. That's just all there is to it. Uh, so yeah, I say four, you're saying three, so I just said three and a half stars, so pretty good. May be our highest ranked uh, match to date. So, Think so? Uh, over, uh, overall, actually, I'm pretty right. sure. I went back and looked. Uh, well, I'm telling you this, spoiler alert, it's not <laughs> So I think I'm going to dip. I mean, Never mind. Dip, dip. Uh, so that's all we got. Uh, we're sorry it ran a little long. Uh, I really was trying to run through this. I could have went on length about Hercules, but I didn't. Uh, I was re restrained here. Hey, that's all right. You know, it's October. It's October. It's spooky season. Goddamn right it is. Goddamn right it is. So, this is Undertaker. So, yeah, we're going to give you the best of Undertaker <laughs> this month alone. You know. So, uh, so anything else to add? No, dude. Okay. What we got? What are we doing next week? What's the oh, uh, what the God. event? You gonna give us a match? Give us the event. Oh, WrestleMania! WrestleMania, baby, the biggest show of them all. And you know, you know, Taker ain't going at this point. There, it's his, it's his win streak on the line. He knew going into WrestleMania, he's like, shit, I'm one to know. I gotta keep I, this streak going. Yeah. Gotta keep this streak going. So, uh, but but did he keep it going? Uh, that's a good question. But you have to find out next week. So, for my boy Simon, for a friend, said boy. Came off like boyfriend, actually. There it is. Yeah, we fucked. There once. it is. Uh, just once, though. And it, it, not gonna lie, just a tip. Just a tip. We want to see what it's gonna be like. It got weird. I kept wanting to make eye contact. He didn't want to. It was just a, it's a very odd, odd. Uh, that was like ten minutes ago too. That's a bad thing. It literally happened before taping that we did. Uh, I mean, I came, so what the fuck does it matter? I didn't get mine though. It don't it matter. I'm gonna rub my self out. You. So, anyways, uh, that's all we got, guys. Till next time.